Hello everyone and welcome back to the World War II Solitaire board game channel. Very special video today. We are gonna go ahead and do a playthrough video of SAS Rogue Regiment. This game is published by Word Forge Games, who also published games like D Day Dice Second Edition and Airborne in Your Pocket. This game is designed by Robert Butler, and this game is launched on Kickstarter tomorrow. So uh, you'll get an exclusive playthrough video here, and hopefully that will uh, help you to make up your mind if this is a game that you would like to back on the Kickstarter or not. We're not going to get too deep into the rules of the system because we're just going to play it out and you'll see you know, the sequence of play and you will see how the game flows. And if you're interested in the rules, I would recommend you to either read the rules yourselves. They're not many pages, about 18 pages of rules. Uh, or you can check out Robert Butler's uh, YouTube uh, channel. He has a playthrough video which uh, explains uh, the sequence of play and the rules of the game in further detail. This will be a playthrough video. Perhaps in the future I'll do a more detailed how to play. Okay guys, so let's start uh, by setting up our very first mission. This uh, preview edition comes with only one mission, which is called Hit and Run. So we're going to go ahead and set up this game right now. So setup is really simple, all we do is take a look at our mission card and we set up the game according to the mission card. So first of all we have panels, so we start by setting up our four panels. And a quick note here is that the designer uh, has told me that this is actually quite a small map considering uh, if we look at what's to come. And <laughs> for me this game actually takes up most of my table. And with the spawn points included, I'm actually going to have to use two of these tables. So it is it is a big game. Okay, so we got uh, the map itself set up. Now we're going to set up uh, some other points. Okay, so we start by adding some stuff now to the map uh, according to the setup card. And the first thing we do is we add our supply dumps. And these are going to be our objective to destroy. And then we go ahead and add some fuel tanks. And uh, these fuel barrels, they're just, uh, you can use them, pick them up, you can shoot at them, stuff like that, cause explosions to take out German troops. Then we have a German officer, he's gonna be standing right here in this uh, building, looking out that window. Then we have some German guards, and guards are always submachine gun uh, troopers. They're gonna be standing out here, guarding the fuel dumps, and then we got one guard in here, looking out of that window. And then we have sentries and we have patrols. So patrols, they will be walking along these lines and sentries, they will be set up on the board where you see these eyes. They are in two colors, they're either white or they're black color. So we'll start with our uh, white ones and First, let's put out our sentries, so that's uh, where you have that eye, and you will put them facing the shaded arrow. And then we have two more, actually we have three more uh, white riflemen, so we have one, two, three different patrol tracks. And this is pretty fun because this is when our first player choice starts. We have two spawning points on each of these patrol tracks and we can choose which one that we want the rifleman to start with. So I can say we're gonna be spawning down here in this corner. So this is a very important uh, decision. I think normally people will start him up here, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and start him down here because that is gonna give me an opportunity to uh, come from behind him if I wait out, if I hide here, come from behind him and assassinate him. And we're gonna do like this, because I think that looks better. And then we have two more white riflemen, so we'll start with one. Let's see here, I will start him over here. And the next one, I will start him down here. And then we have our black riflemen, so we'll start with the sentry points, because those are the simplest. Just where you have the eye facing uh, the shadow arrow, or a shaded arrow. And then we have some patrol tracks, so we are gonna go ahead and choose this one instead of that one, and over here we're gonna put him up here, 
instead of there and this guy will patrol that direction and we have missed one sentry point here and we have one more rifleman to place out somewhere oh yeah we have one more sentry point over here okay so now we need to add some spawn points and we need to add spawn points both for our enemies and for ourselves so for our enemies we have a, a half track that goes over here we have another half track which will go over here and then we have our jeep which our guys uh, start on and that is gonna be down here so i'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit to show you that yeah so i told you this game is huge so down here we have our spawn point uh, which looks like this and we go ahead and set up our two operators on that spawn point and here we have our character cards for our two operators which is Paddy and Jock so we set up these up as well next to our board we have these two tokens on the right side uh, which will represent uh, their health value so they have five health points and then the rest of them uh, displays their uh, different kind of um, abilities and equipment so jock has grenades and he has a uh, lucky rabbit's foot and paddy has a trap he has dynamite and he has ammunition for his sten gun so you will also see their kind of uh, weapons and the weapon stats on these character cards so jock has a 1911 pistol for the 5 acp and grenade he has a grappling hook, a knife, and again that uh, lucky rabbit's foot, which may be used once. Paddy has the Sten gun, submachine gun, the trap, dynamite, and also 1911 pistol. Okay, so one last thing uh, we need to do before we are ready to play is to set up the stealth board. So here on the mission card we have the stealth track going all the way from 9 to alarm. So once we hit the alarm, well, we're gonna have a bad time because the Germans are all gonna seek us out and try to kill us. So we have a recommended stealth setting here on the card. 7 is for easy, 6 is for normal, 5 is for hard. But of course, you can play that any way you want. If you wanna start on 3, on 2, have a really hard game, go ahead. If you wanna start on 9, have a really easy game, Go ahead and start on 9. So I do like that the game gives you that opportunity to choose the difficulty level as you please. However, we're going to go with the recommended stealth setting, uh, which is 7 for easy, 6 for normal, 5 for hard. And we're going to go ahead and go for 7 easy because I think this game is quite hard. So I don't mind saying that I will play it on easy. Okay guys, so before we get going here with the playthrough, let's just briefly discuss the sequence of play that we have here. So first of all, the sequence of play is divided into two sections. So first you have the stealth section, and that is the first part of the game where you, with your operator, you will be sneaking around, assassinating Germans, setting up traps, you know, stuff like that. And depending on how well you do, uh, it will trigger the battle section. So as you are playing the stealth section, this track here is gonna move further down. For example, if you fire a firearm or if you draw a bell icon card from the event deck, stuff like that. Or if you have Germans who have spotted you and become alert, for every alert German, you will decrease that bell icon by one. And once it goes all the way to right here on the red bell, that means you have made the Germans sound the alarm. And that triggers the battle section. So let's just briefly discuss it here again. Stealth section consists of six phases. First is the operator phase, you do actions. Second is the advance uh, axis phase, and that is gonna let axis units who have spotted one of your operators advance towards it. And then you have event phase where you will draw uh, an event card which might, for example, trigger one of these sentries to turn or one of the patrols to turn. And then you have the actual axis patrol phase. So all of these axis units which are on patrols will move according to their movement value. And all of the infantry has a four in movement value. So they will mo move for four steps. And then you have the Axis attack phase and the Axis units which have spotted one of your operators and are alert will fire on your operators if they have line of sight. And then you have the end phase which is just basically cleaning up 
stuff from the board. If you have a corpse in one of the forests or one of the buildings, you'll remove that corpse, stuff like that. And the battle section is just like the stealth section. I got them all both up on the screen, so you should be able to see it. You also have the operator face, works the same. Axis advance face works pretty much the same. And then you have the event face. Again, it's the same. But you will uh, look at the card, and <laughs> I don't want to uh, look at this card now because I'm going to spoil my game. But you will look at the right side of the card, and we're going to get to that. And then you have the axis attack phase, it works the same, and the end phase also works the same. So the only thing we don't have in the battle section here is if we look at these sections, we do not have the axis patrol phase. And the reason for that is because all of these units which are on patrol will be instead alerted and advancing towards the nearest spotted operator. And that's it. So let's go ahead and dig into the game. All right, so we are currently in our operator's face and now we will do actions. So each operator has four action points and let's take a look here at all of our actions. We can see we have a bunch of different actions here with a bunch of different costs. So we're still in the stealth section obviously and I intend to stay in this section for as long as possible and I am gonna go ahead and try to take out as many of these patrols and sentries as I can. So I'm waiting for this guy to pass out here so I can go behind him and stab him and also kill this guy. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna use Paddy and Paddy's gonna move one, two, and then he's gonna stay and he's actually gonna go ahead and crouch. And that is a total of three uh, action points. That is one for moving, two for moving, and then three finally for actually uh, crouching. And the reason why I crouch here, you might ask why. Well, the thing is, if we have now with an event card, we can cause this guy here to turn around, and then during the patrol phase, he will walk down here, and if I'm not crouching, he will see me, because all of the German infantry can see for eight hexes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm only seven hexes away. So even though that's not, it's not very likely to happen, it could happen and that's gonna immediately ruin my chances of, of uh, doing very good in the stealth section. So this guy uh, walks here, that's just three action points and the action points you don't use are wasted. And then we have this guy here and I gotta be a little bit careful because this patrolman can see also for eight hexes. So he can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means I can't step up on that hex, I have to move to this hex. Uh, and I'm actually gonna stay there, I'm gonna wait for this guy to pass. We have, uh, like I told you, we have three objectives. We need to take out those supply dumps, we need to kill that German officer, and then we need to get back to this spawn point. Uh, so this spawn point will also be our extraction point. So that's the first phase of the game. Now we have the Axis Advance phase. However, we do not have any spotted operator, nor do we have any alert Axis unit. So we simply skip the Axis Advance phase. Then we have the Event phase, and the Event phase is pretty straightforward. We have this Event deck here. So we go ahead and draw the top card. And on the card we have two different sides. We have the Stealth section side and the Battle section side. So we're gonna ignore this until we actually get into the battle section. We are still in the stealth section and the stealth section tells us to spawn two enemy units. So we're gonna have to spawn two uh, enemy SMG troopers and as we see here, they will spawn on a road. The other spawn point is on a field. So that means we're gonna go ahead and spawn him here on the right side, two of these SMG guys and they're actually gonna be, I can even walk here without them seeing me, stuff like that, until they are actually placed on the board. And this is one thing with, uh, with the stealth section that I like to drag it out, try to kill as many of the Axis units on the board as possible before I trigger the alarm. However, one bad thing with that is that reinforcements will start to stack up in the spawn points. However, once it's filled out, it it can't spawn more enemy units. So the maximum amount of enemy reinforcements on this specific map is eight 
four on the right side, four on the left. These uh, guys are, by the way, SMG troopers, so they're not ordinary riflemen. They're SMG like these three guards, so they have a little bit more firepower than these riflemen. So yeah, you want to get out before the alarm trigger, because once the alarm triggers, these guys are going to go ahead and go for you. And then we have a uh, third, uh, these event cards are really f <laughs> fun, I gotta say. Again, left side is the stealth side, right side is the uh, alarm side or the battle side. And then we have this little coin, which goes right here in the middle. Always starts on the black side. And this is our patrol uh, coin, uh, which will guide us during the next phase, which is the axis patrol phase. So during the axis patrol phase, all of the patrols on these lines will move for their movement value. So you always start on black, and that means the black guards will start. So one, two, three, and four. And then we have one more over here, who is gonna walk one, two, three, four into that house. And then we have also one up here. And this guy up here is patrolling inside of this uh, supply building, something like that. So it's actually not a building because we have a line here and there's a building here. But anyway, he will also go for four, one, two, three, four. And that is the end of the Axis patrol phase. And now we come to the Axis attack phase. But again, there's no spotted operator, there is no alert. Uh, axis unit, so we go just go ahead and skip the axis attack phase and then now we get to the last phase of the game Which is the end phase and again, there's nothing to do here if we would have had some of these target markers out We would remove those if we had any corpses laying in any buildings or in any forest We would also remove those but again, we don't so we simply skip that and that it that is all the phases of the game, so we have now played a full turn of SAS Rogue Regiment. Okay, so we go ahead and set this aside, and we go ahead and play our second round. Uh, I think I'm gonna stay put here, I'm just gonna go ahead and wait this out, because now, next turn, the, the white patrols are gonna move, so I'll stay. And that uh, leads us to Axis Advanced phase, we skip it, we go to the event phase, we draw the next event card, and that's rather unfortunate because that uh, breaks my planning a little bit, because <laughs> this means all of our white patrols are gonna turn. So this guy turns like that, and this guy up here turns like that, and this guy will turn like that. So that kind of ruined our plan a little bit, because then we take our coin, and we put it on the other side, the white side. So we now go to the next step of the game, which is Axis Patrol Phase. So again, these guys will go one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, well, that's, that can happen, you know, it's all right. We have the Operator Phase. I'm gonna use, uh, start by using Patty two uh, action points to climb this crate and then I'm gonna use one action point to put out this trap over here and then I will use my last action point to move back down here and I will keep hiding and then we have Jock he is gonna go for one two and then he will use move and attack, that is one action point, so move, attack, he kills this guy with his uh, with his knife, and the knife to kill a German unit, I need to roll one or higher, so, you know, it's a guaranteed kill, so this German, Herman the German, he's dead. And we replace that German with a corpse token. So that's three action points, one movement, two movement, and then one action point for moving uh, and attacking. And I'm gonna use my last action point. Uh, I, I'm contemplating whatever I should move up with Jock. I think I will try to actually move up with him. And then with my other guy, I think I'm gonna go ahead and move to the right. So I move to the left with my last action point. And we have now the Axis Advance phase, which we skip, of course. Event phase, so we draw another event card. And look at that. We get the cigarette token. So the cigarette token can be used during our uh, operator phase. And that's going to let us skip 
uh, skip, it's gonna, we can put it on, for example, this guy, and we can go past him. He's not gonna be able to see us because he will be occupied by smoking his cigarette. So we go ahead and take the cigarette and put it on one of our character's item cards. And we take the patrol token, put it on the event card, and we go ahead and advance our black patrols for four hexes. One, two, three, four. And let's see, we have one more guy here. One, two, three, four. And then up here, you're gonna have to trust me. One, two, three, four. And we put that aside. We have that axis attack face, which we skip and the face. Remove any of these guys. Uh, any corpses and I'm gonna see here Ooh, maybe this guy actually sees the corpse so in a building you will be able to see and the enemy will be able to see for one hex so if he actually sees that corpse now which I think he does we are gonna have real trouble so you got this tool to be able to check line of sight and for line of sight it's gonna be center of hex to center of hex. And I'm gonna say that he actually gets to see it because he doesn't need to see the center of the corpse. He just needs to see a part of it. So that is indeed very bad and stupid of me how I could actually not think of that guy who was gonna come there. So that means he goes to the alar alarmed side. And he screams something like uh, uh, Ein Drängling, uh, an intruder in German. And as he does that, he also triggers every German unit within four hexes. So one, two, we have one more. And one, two, three, four. So we have one more. Now we have three triggered <laughs> German units. So this is pretty bad. Uh, these guys are not going to do anything currently because they do not see my operator. So they're just going to stay alerted. However, that's really bad because that means a few things. And most importantly, it means that during the end phase now, I will have to adjust the bell icon one, two, three. Because we have three alerted Axis units. So, oh man, that was stupid. That was really stupid of me. Uh, okay, that sucks. Uh, this guy is gonna go ahead and um, and stay put. Let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I actually think he's gonna go ahead and, and continue walking, but alerted. And then again, we remove the corpse. Okay, so we have. Uh, now enter next turn and we need to get rid of these guys. So Jock here, he's gonna move one, two, three. He sprints, that's two action points. And then he's gonna move one, two. So one action point for moving. And then the last action point is move and attack. And I'm gonna move here and kill this guy. So I assassinate him with my, whoops, with my knife. And we replace that token with a corpse token. And now these guys, they will, see, they see that I'm, uh, you know, they see that I'm killing him, but they still can't see me. And I don't care that they see that I kill him because they're already alerted. They can only see this hex because I'm in the building. So I'm fine with them, you know, seeing that that actually happens. Uh, and that's the end of his action. So now I will use one movement point to go here. I used the second movement point to pick that uh, trap up. And let's see here. Next patrol is gonna be white. So I will move one, two, three hexes. Uh, that's a sprint. So I've now used a total of four action points, I think, because pick up a pickup is actually zero action points. So that's gonna be one, three action points, and four. I go ahead and move over here. And I will stand up, uh, pop up as well. I did that before moving, and that is also a free action point. 
Okay, and then we have the Axis Advance phase. However, the Axis units will not advance since they have not discovered any of my operators. And then we have the Event phase. We draw an Event card. And the Event card tells us to turn our crap. Turn our um, White Patrols. And now I am actually spotted. So this guy can see for eight hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm six hexes away, so that means I'm spotted because I went ahead and decided to pop up. If I was crouched here, he would not be able to see me, so that's silly me. But that means, in fact, I'm spotted, so I go ahead and change my operator token to a spotted one. And yeah, that's rather unfortunate. Because now we have the Axis attack phase. And this guy, since he has been become alert and this guy is spotted, that means he will get to attack. So this guy is a rifleman, so let's go ahead and take a look at our quick reference guard. We can see that the riflemen have a short range of 4, long range of 8. We are 6 hexes away, so he will use his long range fire. That means he will not have a modifier minus 1 to his roll because of his um, uh, short range. So we see here operator defense roll, we need to roll 1d6 and we need to roll 5 or higher, otherwise we're gonna be hit. So let's go ahead and roll and hope for a 5 or higher. <laughs> okay, that did not wanna take part of this. Oh, we're all a 6, that is a very good roll because that means we did not take any damage. If we would have taken any damage, we would simply go ahead and take our health token and decrease it by 1. Okay, and then we have the end phase. The end phase, we go ahead and remove this corpse. And then we have real, real trouble here. Because now we need to decrease it by three. One, two, three. So next turn, we're, we're gonna <laughs> sound alarm. So we got three of these alert uh, guys. And actually, I think one, two, yeah. We're actually gonna trigger the alarm, guys. Because when this guy spotted me, he actually alerted his friend up here, who also became alerted. And that means this goes all the way down, so we have now triggered the alarm. Wow, that did not, <laughs> that did not go as expected. Uh, I, sh I should have used a cigarette or something on that guy. But I, I, for some reason, I didn't think he was gonna come that way, and that's the fun part with this game because you gotta really, you gotta really look at every individual patrol line and sentry, and really think of all the different things that can happen because they will very likely happen. Okay, so we have actually then uh, sounded alarm, so we have uh, now gone to the battle section of the game. So the first thing we're gonna do now is alert all of the Germans on the board. So we alert the Germans here, let's see. The officer, the patrolman, even the guys here which are not spawned, our guards, sentries, all of them become alerted, so yeah, this is gonna get a little bit hard now. <laughs> I was hoping to stay in the stealth section a little bit longer, but uh, that's the thing with this game, it usually does not go as planned. And here we have even one more. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna try to just, I'm gonna try to leg it, I'm gonna try to run up here, basically, try to stick together, run up here, eliminate that officer, blow these up with my grenades and just get the hell out. Okay, so let's take a look here at the sequence of play since we have now entered the battle section. Sequence of play is instead uh, now five phases instead of six because we skipped the axis patrol phase. So uh, operator first, uh, that's, you know, just as uh, the old one. And I'm a little bit of, um, you know, I have a little bit of a problem here because all of these guys are alerted and uh, they haven't seen this guy, but they have seen that guy. And the problem now is if I walk within line of sight, they will immediately fire on me. So uh, that is definitely a problem. I could perhaps try to set up an ambush and have this guy, you know, somewhere 
uh, where the enemies can, you know, they will advance and then I can use this guy to shoot at them. I can use the target counter to kind of set up an ambush. And I'm thinking perhaps that is pretty much the only way that we can actually win this because there are going to be a lot of guys coming towards me now. We have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 enemy units. Uh, okay, this did not go as planned. Okay, so this guy is going to go ahead and retreat. He's going to go ahead and run, sprint, 1, 2, 3. So that's uh, free movement points. And then we're going to use move and play. So one movement point. Uh, and that is one action point. So we have one action point remaining. And then last one, I'm going to move and place. And I will place the trap here at the entrance of this building. And then this guy will move. See, he has a grenade and a pistol. He will move down here, I think. I want to get into firing position of this guy. Okay, so he will actually move down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so he, he will move down there and simply stay over there. Uh, or perhaps I should stay and actually use the target. So I'll use the target marker because this guy is going to move in here. So that's a good ambush. I can stay here and once he actually enters and see me, bam, I will fire the pistol at him. Okay, so that's it. And then we have the Axis advance phase. And remember, we got a bunch of guys here, you know, coming to kill us. But remember, we're, you know, uh, commandos. We're specially trained for this kind of situation. So even though it looks foobar, you know, it might not be. So we go ahead and move all of the Axis units. And I would actually recommend having some kind of marker here to actually remember which of these units you have moved. Because when you have 14 units moving towards you, you know, it's going to be a little bit... Uh, which one did I move? Uh, so let's go ahead and try to do this systematically. We, we'll just go with this board, this board, this board, and that board, and move closest uh, first. So this guy, uh, remember the movement points for the infantry is four, so he will move one, two, three, and then, aha, he spots my, uh, my guy here. Bada boom. So he would turn him now to the spotted. And then we uh, have the uh, target marker on him so that means we will actually get to fire so if we look at our uh, action card here we can see that the pistol the 1911 has a close weapon range of four long range of eight and we need to roll five or higher to um, to actually kill however we have a few nice modifiers now first of all we have a minus one because we are at close range and then we have a minus two because we have uh, targeted uh, the enemy. So that means we only need to roll two or higher to actually kill. <laughs> okay, we roll a one. That is not very good. Okay, and we keep them moving. So this guy, one, two, three, uh, and he's blocked so he can't move in. Uh, and I'm guessing this guy should actually because he was here. So one, two, three, four. I'm guessing he moves in like that then. And then we have this guy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And let's do this one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The officer will stay. He's not going to go ahead and charge into a bunch of commandos who's uh, looking to kill him. But this guy will charge. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay. <laughs> and then we have the Axis attack phase. And this is going to be bad for me now because... Uh, this guy is going to get shot twice. So we have two riflemen and the riflemen will attack with a d6. And if we look at the quick reference guide here again, we need to roll five or higher to successfully defend against them. However, we have some uh, defense modifiers here and here we have uh, 
minus one. We don't have the in building because that's for HMG and mortar, but we have the minus one to our roll. So that means we will only successfully defend on a roll of six or higher. We start by this guy and we roll a three. So that is one damage. Next guy. That is a four. So that's one more damage. Okay, that is definitely not good. Definitely not good. Yeah, so he can actually see into this building. So that is gonna be hell. Uh, okay, so he will also attack uh, within close range, six or higher to the ah, four. Okay, this is turning into a shitstorm. In my excitement also, I did not do the event phase. And guess what? Here we have the event phase. The event phase, when we have an alarm, is gonna be reinforcements of four. <laughs> okay, that is very bad. Uh, reinforcements of four, we have to put four submachine gunners here. Uh, I can tell you that I'm not very likely going to be able to, uh, <laughs> to win this mission, but we're gonna go ahead and fight on until then, because who knows what can happen. Uh, and that is the event. We have the end phase uh, now. Uh, so event phase done. Um, it doesn't matter that we did it after the attack phase because you know they would not move until advance phase anyway. So we go now to the next uh, turn and let's see what the hell we want to do. I'm not sure what we want. I'm, I'm gonna have to try to kill them basically. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my grenade. I think to this position. So the way the grenade works is it has a range of six and you can throw it within line of sight or, you know, not without line of sight. And then it, it might roll a little bit. It's a little bit complicated, but I have line of sight. So I, I am going to go ahead and throw the grenade over here. So the, the way this uh, grenade work is you replace it with the blast token. So let's go ahead and put the Germans on the blast. So they end up like that, and then from the grenade, as you see on your card, you will get to roll four dice. And the attack will be successful if you roll two or higher, and then you can choose after the blast which of these German units to kill. So we had a roll, and we roll two and higher on all of them, so that means we have a total of four kills. So we go ahead and remove all of these guys, and replace them with corpses and you can actually go ahead and remove the blast the blast straight away one note uh, thing to note here is if you actually use the grenades before you trigger the alarm using that grenade will trigger the alarm okay so this guy is in bad condition he only has two health points left so i'm gonna go ahead and rush forward with this guy to try to intercept any enemies and let's see one two three four so this guy is gonna come up to the window now so I am gonna go ahead and go one two three that's two action points for sprinting and then Paddy is gonna go ahead and use the target marker on this guy this guy is gonna come one two three four actually he's gonna go ahead and use it on that guy and that's the end of my operator face uh, okay so this guy used the grenade so he can actually also that is one action point for using the grenade. He will also use this one, but he will use it on him. So setting up an ambush here. Okay, now we have the Axis advanced phase. So we're gonna have a bunch of Axis units advancing towards us. And yeah, we have reinforcements here. Uh. All right, so a lot of Axis units to uh, go ahead and advance. And I'm actually gonna take the liberty of removing these corpses. Since we're already discovered, it really doesn't matter that these corpses are there. So, one, two, three, four. And let's do this guy. One, two, three, four. And then let's get to this one. So, one, two, and blam. I'm gonna shoot him here now with Jock, uh, since he shows his ugly face through the window. And he is within two ranges, uh, two squares. So that means I will get to fire with my short distance modifier. So normally I need five or lower to kill, but now I only need four lower. And I roll 
a one, sorry, I need a four or higher. So yeah, that's, uh, that's no good. Uh, that's a miss. So he moves like that. And then we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and a reinforcements, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, yeah. And up here, one, two, three, four, and again, it's gonna be uh, within short distance, so, uh, from this guy, so he's gonna go ahead and fire and He will also require to roll a four or higher and it also five so we actually managed to take this guy out and Let's see here. We have a bunch of guys up here coming to whoops one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three, four, one, two, three. And yeah, he's stuck there. Man, there was an earthquake going on or something. And that is the end of the Axis Advance phase. We now have the Event phase. So we go ahead and pull out a card and we, <laughs> we have more reinforcements. Okay, I'm kind of running out of uh, SMG troopers soon. Let's see here. And they're gonna be, they're gonna start of course on their alert side. And one, two, let's see here. Like that, okay. And of course we skip using this token, the coin, during the alert phase since we do not have the Axis patrol phase. And then we have the Axis attack phase. So the only one who can attack is this guy. He can attack Jock. So he, Jock to defend, will need to roll a five or higher. And he rolls two, so unfortunately that means Again, uh, actually I need a 6 or higher because he was at close range. So I drop 1 health again, so I am now down to 1 health point. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. This guy is gonna use all of his action points for the recover action, which will give him 1 health point. And uh, Patty will move, he will sprint 1, 2, 3, and then he will attack with his uh, stun gun. So with the stun gun, you will spend ammo and you will get to roll three dice, five or higher to kill. However, at close range, four or higher to kill. So I spend one ammo, I shoot the stun gun and I roll a six and a five. So that is a total of two kills. I could actually allocate those if we had several enemies, but we don't. And that means I managed to kill that enemy. I go ahead and discard that ammo token. And that's the end of my turn. We go to Axis Advance. So this guy, bop, blam. He walks into the trap. The trap is used and we kill that Axis unit. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Ooh, that's bad. Uh, he's gonna walk that way even. And let's see, a lot of guys here to advance. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to say that I've played this game a couple of times. It has never ended like this. I think maybe. I was a little bit unconscious. Um, uh, I should not have gotten discovered here. I should have stayed uh, crouched down. So it doesn't usually end like this. This really looks horrible, but this is not usually the way it goes. Uh, I am gonna have to use more grenades if I survive, and I don't think I'm gonna survive because now after the Axis Advance phase, we go ahead and go to the Axis um, Event phase. And this time we have a countryside, which means nothing will happen, so that's good. And then we have Axis attack phase. Okay, so we're gonna have a lot of attacks now. Uh, we will start with this guy, uh, who will attack uh, Jock. And it's an SMG trooper now, so he will roll 2d6, 
and I will need to roll four or higher to defend against that attack. And roll a one and a two, so I'm sorry to tell you, uh, Jock. <laughs> well, Jock has problems. Jack loses a total of two uh, health points, and unfortunately that means for us, Jock uh, is killed in action. Okay, so that, uh, that sucks rather much. We have the Rifleman here, he also has line of sight. So with the Rifleman, at least I will only get 1d6. I need to roll a uh, 5 or higher to defend. I roll a 4, so I lose 1 health point. I have 4 health points remaining. And that's the end of the phase. We go to the end phase and we would remove... Uh, this one is gonna stay, we would remove otherwise, you know, corpses and stuff. We remove Jock's corpse. So we have the Operator phase and I'm just gonna go ahead and go blasting. I will move, uh, b b b b I will move like so, and then I will attack. So that's one action point, actually moving and attacking. I will use my stem gun, which will let me roll three dice. I need to roll four or higher. Usually it's five or higher, but now it's four or higher because I'm at close range. And I roll a four and a one. Uh, okay, that's uh, that's a decent roll. That is two hits, so I kill. Boop, these two guys. And that is just one action, so I have more actions, so I'm gonna go ahead and use for my second attack, which is my second action, I will use the pistol and actually I will move and fire, so I will move uh, I will move over here and I will attack with the pistol. I need to roll a five or higher. Uh, actually, I need to roll a six or uh, a four or higher because it's at close range. So that is another kill. And uh, should I try to sprint away? That's two actions. I will try to sprint away. One, two, three. And that is the end of my actions. And we now go to the Axis Advance phase. So one, two, three, four. 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 Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to kill some of them, but uh, <laughs> not enough of them. Now we have the event phase, and we have another country side uh, picture here so nothing happens and this is probably the end of the game because now we have the axis attack phase and we're gonna take an attack from a total of five german units so let's start with this smg trooper he will fire with 2d6 normally i would need to roll four or higher to defend but now i need to roll five or higher because he is at short range i'm gonna reroll that one okay that's two hits we take two damage we're down to two this guy will also fire with SMG. I need to roll four or higher. I rolled two sixes, so I actually defend against that attack. Can we do it? This guy also needs... Ugh, that is one hit, one defend, uh, successful defense, and then we have a rifleman. He will fire with a D6. I need to roll six to defend. <laughs> I roll three. So that is the end of our playthrough. Uh, Paddy got killed. Uh, by that rifleman and we also had another rifleman over here who uh, would get to fire so oof. okay that was a tough tough game again usually that is not what happens usually i screw up but much later <laughs> much later usually i don't screw up so so early on uh usually i would say i get at least you know I have killed about a little bit more than half of the patrols and the sentries and then I get discovered and then I'm usually closer to the objective. So what why, what my original plan were were to take Jock up to this, you know, kill, kill these guys, move up into the forest and climb this wall and kill that guard and then start blowing up the objectives and then with uh, Paddy walk this way and come from behind here and assassinate the officer or shoot him with the pistol basically because he can't assassinate since he doesn't have a knife and usually when I have that plan uh, 
a little bit after the middle of, you know, through the game, they will discover me. And then I just leg it. I just run in there. I throw my grenades all around uh, on these supply depots. I shoot this guy with the stem gun and I make it back uh, to the extraction point. But, you know, again, with this game, uh, and I'm really impressed with how that works because I was a little bit worried at first when I started playing. It felt a little bit, when I saw these patrol lines, the sentry points, I was feeling like, hmm, it's gonna be really static. How, how are they? I mean, I can really see how they're gonna move. How are they gonna get to discover me? But they do because there is a bunch of different ways that they can actually discover you based on if they turn and you really have to go long in the uh, thought process to really uh, calculate all of that. And you saw that here. I missed the fact that this guy standing all the way up here could actually turn and then walk down here and effectively see me. So, uh, well, I am impressed with how that works. With I think it's a, a brilliant, brilliant system with the event cards. And, you know... Again, that once you have the alarm, if you have these submachine gunners storming the board, well, <laughs> you're gonna need grenades. You're gonna need lots of them. I think I was a little bit unlucky with all of the reinforcements. And still, I mean, I killed, I killed quite a lot of them before I went down myself. Guys, this is SAS Rogue Regiment, which uh, will launch on Kickstarter tomorrow. Uh, one note here is that this is a prototype copy, so of course uh, things could change for the final product. I'm guessing that they're going to change for the better. And then, uh, like also the designer said, this is a small scenario. So we're going to have some huge bloody scenarios, you can imagine, since I can't actually really fit with the spawn board, I can't actually fit this on my table I have to kind of you know use either two tables or actually have some part of it like this much going off the table so this is a huge game and I like huge games guys thank you so much for watching uh, if you're not subscribed I would hope that I've earned your subscription uh, also commenting on the uh, video and liking the video helps me out a lot if you want to help a little bit extra you can become a supporting member of the channel for only 2.99 US dollars a month or you can do a one time through donation through PayPal or YouTube super thanks I prefer if you use PayPal because YouTube will take about 30% of the cut from any YouTube super thanks donation uh, guys, thank you so much. Make sure to check out the Kickstarter. You will find the link to the Kickstarter in the video description. And stay tuned to the channel because, of course, we're going to do more of Rogue Regiment here on the World War II Solitaire Board Game channel. Okay, guys, see you next time.